Now, in, in the last recording, we looked at uh, binary numbers and uh, what their equivalent was in decimal and hexadecimal. Today, or in this lesson, what we're going to look at is uh, certain operations that can take place on those uh, binary numbers. So, I'm going to just move to here, and I'm going to mention um, some different uh, operators that can be done on these uh, binary numbers. Now, firstly, an individual um, section or digit of a binary number is known as a bit, okay, and that means binary digit. So if I have a binary number 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, something like that, uh, one of these individually is known as a single bit. And so the operators that we will be looking at are known as the bitwise operators because they operate on individual bits. You'll notice here that the number that I've put here, just come back to it here, the number that I've put here is uh, larger than any of the ones that you've seen previously. However, so because we only saw four in this case, what we can do is we can split these up into sections of four. And we can see 1110, and we can look at our table, and we find 1110 is either 14 in decimal or E in hexadecimal. So that goes down as an E. Uh, 0011, we can look back here, and we say 0011, that's a 3 in both decimal and hexadecimal. So I just put it down as a 3 here. So if we wanted to write that as hexadecimal, we'd normally write it as 0x just to tell us that it's hexadecimal, and then we'd say 3e. Okay, so any of these can be split up into sections of four in order to do that. Now, the binary operations that we can do, uh, the first one I'm going to show you is an AND. Okay. And I'm just going to pause a moment while I build the truth table for this. Okay, so I've built up a truth table for this, and what the truth table tells us is um, when we AND two binary bits, together, what do we get as a result? So if I have two binary bits, the number of possible combinations I could have are four. Uh, so I've called my two binary bits uh, a name, in this case, A and B, and then I get a result after I and them together. So zero and zero gives me a zero out. A zero and a one gives me a zero out. A one and a zero gives me a zero out, but a one and a one together gives me a one. And what that tells us is that um, if you remember uh, in situations where we said a zero meant false and a one meant true, so you can see where the name truth table comes from. I spelled that wrong, T-R-U-E. Um, what we find is that if uh, what we need is both A and B to be true before I get a true output. So it's only this situation where A is true and B is true that I get a true output. Okay, and we saw this uh, in the other operators uh, that, that we used previously, um, the logical operators, but they were to do with uh, something either being zero or zero for false or non-zero. Non-zero for true. In this case, we're dealing with individual bits, so it's either zero or one, so therefore a one is true and a zero is a false. Okay, that's the and there. Uh, I'm just going to pause a moment while I do the next one, which is an R. So I'm going to say R here, or I'm going to write the uh, symbol for it. Now the symbol for it, or the, the symbol that you're going to use in uh, your C program is a one that looks like this. But it's not that hard, to, or it's, it's quite hard to spot. Sometimes it's shown just completely as a straight line. It's down just between the, um, the shift key, which is normally shown as a little arrow on your keyboard and the Z key, which is over here, uh, you have a backslash, and then above that you have this line. Um, so on that key there, so it's a shift, and that button is going to give you that R operator. Similar to, you use do, d two of those uh, when you were doing, dealing with the logical operators. So I'm just going to pause a moment while I build up the table for the uh, R. So what we see here is that we've got, again, two binary bits called A and B, and what we're saying in this case is that the output will be true if either A or B are true, okay? It can also mean that either A or B or both are true. However, in the first case, both A and B are zero, are therefore false, so neither A nor B are true, and therefore the output is uh, false. 
However, in the next case, A is not true, but B is. So when we say A or B being true, B is true, so that gives us a true output. The opposite is the case. Uh, the, the opposite case gives us the same, where we have uh, A being true, but B not being true. We still get a true output. And either A or B or both being true, so therefore we get a one output for uh, the two ones. Okay. Now, uh, there is one called an exclusive R. Um, so we call that XOR. And the symbol used for this is the little hat symbol, which is just up above the 6 key on the keyboard. Now, the trouble is that little hat symbol, uh, a lot of people accidentally use that to mean the power. So if I want 6 to the power of 3, uh, they write it as that because a lot of programming languages use that. However, that's not correct in C, so that'll give you... Um, that will actually do an exclusive R on a 6 and a 3 and give you a result. Probably not the result you're expecting. So you need to be aware that it's used for something else here. Again, I'm just going to pause uh, while I do up the table for this. Now, the truth table for the XR is very, very similar to the R, except in one small place. What we're saying is that we it must exclusively be either A or B that is true in order to give us a true output. We cannot have both A and B being true. Okay, so if neither A nor B are true, then we get false out. If A is not true, but B is, we get a true out. If uh, A is true, but B is not, we get a true out. But if A, both A and B are true, we get a false or a non-true out. Okay, so that's the XR. There's one other one I want to show you here, and that's the uh, complement. And what it does is it literally just... Um, changes a 1 to a 0 and a 0 to a 1. I won't even pause while I'm drawing up this table because it's very quick. We don't have a situation of having an A and a B in this case. We just have one number. So A and out. So if it's a 0, that becomes a 1. If it's a 1, it becomes a 0. And the symbol we use for that is the little tilde symbol, which is just above the hash key on most, um, on most computers. Okay, beside the return key. So that's the complement. So I'm going to leave the uh, lecture there at that because uh, now in a few minutes, uh, or in the in the next next presentation, uh, I'm going to show how these operators are used in a C program.